Acts 7, 8 through 12. Okay, and again, this is the story of Stephen. We're back in the story of Stephen. Now, what he's doing here is he's going back through the Old Testament. Previously, before this, he uh, started talking about Abraham. And he's on trial with a priest for preaching the gospel here. Verse 8. He also gave Abraham the ceremony of circumcision at that time as evidence of the covenant between God and the people of Abraham. And so Isaac, Abraham's son, was circumcised when he was eight days old. Isaac became the father of Jacob, and Jacob was the father of the twelve patriarchs of the Jewish nation. So this was the sign God gave them that distinguished them from all other people. This was one of the few things they kept regardless of how fallen away they got. It, it showed them that they were God's people. It signified that they were special. They were set apart from the rest of the world. Later they would be given the law, but at this point this was what set them apart. Now, it's important to note that there are some in this list Ishmael and Esau were circumcised, but they weren't. They never were chosen by the Lord for Him and set apart. Verse nine: These people were very jealous of Joseph. It's referring to the eleven, ten other brothers, the patriarchs, and sold him to be a slave in Egypt. But God was with him. We see in that story how he was sold as a slave, but God was with him, and then how he's in prison, but God was with him. And it seemed how everybody around him seemed to prosper, but he just kept getting knocked down. He was from a slave to a prison, but eventually God saw him to the, be high ranked in Egypt because God took him there. Sometimes the Serving God allows us to be knocked down to places we don't want to go. Stephen was out serving God, and now he's on trial. It ain't where we go in this world. It's where the Lord takes us to serve Him. If Stephen would have been arrested, he wouldn't have been able to get witness to these men he was on trial with, necessarily. If Joseph wasn't wouldn't have been arrested. He wouldn't have been able to save the people. God's purpose, although sometimes it may be hard for us to accept, He's got a plan behind it. Stephen would have ended up being stoned, but Saul was there, and Saul would remember that when he came to faith himself. And delivered him out of the, all his anguish and gave him favor before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. God also gave Joseph unusual wisdom so that Pharaoh appointed him governor over all Egypt as well as putting him in charge of all the affairs of the palace. Now, we got to understand, this didn't, wasn't something that happened as soon as, it was years, years. That, uh, Joseph probably was a slave for years, and he may have been in prison for a few years before any of this happened. Uh, we got to be patient when we serve God, because things ain't going to happen instantly. But God gave him the wisdom and the ability to get to the place where God wanted him to be in time. We have patience and we trust in God when we serve Him, He's going to give us the ability to be wherever He wants us to be. It ain't going to happen overnight. We're going to grow in faith and grow close to Him, and He'll take us where He wants us. For Joseph, he was able to interpret dreams, and he's put in charge of 
keeping the food and making sure it was prepared for the days they would have less. So it was a very important role he was put in place in charge of. But the famine developed in Egypt and Canaan, and there was a great misery for our ancestors when the, their food was gone. We see even in the time of Abraham, some reason Egypt was a pl place where people went during famine. We see how he went there. And we see how Isaac, when he had famine, considered going there, but you know, through consulting the Lord, he stayed in Israel, in Canaan at the time. So we see how some reason Egypt was a place to go, but this was a famine far beyond any other famine. A famine that if Joseph wasn't there to interpret the dream of Pharaoh, Egypt wouldn't have even been able to survive through it. And one of the main reasons Egypt was so good with the famines is because they had denial. So denial could allow things to grow more steadily. And these rest of these were most of the famines were called because of the lack of rain. So the lack of rain caused famine elsewhere, but the offshore of the Nile caused Egypt to be able to have things grow still. Jacob heard that there was still grain in Egypt, so he went and sent his sons to buy some. Now this is his ten sons. They send, he sends them to Egypt. Now all their sons stay behind. Benjamin stays behind. Jacob stays behind. They're, so they got ten of them going. I don't. It doesn't mention them having servants go with them, so it's possibly just the ten with supplies to go to Egypt to gather food to bring back. So we see how God's plan to use Joseph starts off with him being sold into slavery, but it, then his brothers who hate him sell him into slavery, but then they go to Egypt to where they don't know he's in a place of promise to find help. This world may knock us down, but as long as we're seeking the Lord, he's, we're going to go where He wants us to be. 